So in the last video that I posted, uh, I talked a lot about the new developments of the framework team for the framework laptop. It's a fantastic laptop that is highly user serviceable and now it's also extremely upgradable. Now it has been upgradable for a little while now, but uh, the framework team announced a set of new motherboards on the Intel side, but also for the first time AMD Ryzen motherboards. So this is a really exciting time if you're an owner of a framework laptop or you're even just thinking about getting into ownership of a framework laptop. But one of the major concerns of a couple of the early comments on that video was the general cost of of a framework laptop putting it sort of uh, on the upper end of what you could expect from a laptop with those types of specs. So today I wanna tackle what exactly the cost of ownership of a framework laptop looks like compared to a few other, at least comparable devices when it comes to specs. So let's take a look at that comparison because it's kind of interesting. So here is the chart that I came up with comparing the cost of ownership of the framework laptop to several competitors with very similar similar specs and some of the specs aren't perfectly identical but uh, that's okay we're just trying to get a feel for where framework and owning a framework laptop might line up with other similar machines so the framework laptop in particular has an i5 1240p 16 gigs of ram 512 gigabyte nvme drive and worth noting this is the diy version this is not a pre-configured version because the pre-configured versions are significantly more expensive than they really need to be if you're buying a framework laptop really you should be getting the DIY version and putting in your own RAM, your own storage, because that's gonna save you quite a bit of money. Now also with the framework laptop, you do have to account for the fact that you need to buy a power cord separately, or you can buy it from framework if you wanna save yourself some time and just purchase it all together, as well as a USB-C to C cable for purposes of charging. Now the competitors I came up with, these are all Amazon listings um, that have very similar specs, if not identical specs, except for things like the screens, the speakers, you know, you can't really account on a laptop for everything being absolutely identical. For instance, the Dell XPS 13 is a high quality laptop as a very nice uh, speaker setup, as well as a fantastic screen, which I would venture to say are likely better than what Framework is offering that's just a fact of the matter, which is also probably why a renewed Dell XPS 13 is still a thousand dollars on Amazon. Jumping over, there's the Asus ZenBook 14. This is about $800. You are giving up a little bit of RAM there, but you do get more storage in return. The MSI Prestige 14 is a little bit cheaper of a laptop. You do give up once again, you're down to eight gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD. And then the Acer Swift 3 14 inch. This is a renewed model, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD. And the pricing for each one of these is sort of in the same row there. Worth noting, every single item here that has an Amazon link on the spreadsheet will also be linked in the description down below so you can check out current pricing and availability. Like I said, every single model of working out exactly how much a framework laptop costs versus its competition is gonna be a little bit different. And this is all gonna be relative to how often do you upgrade, when you upgrade, how do you handle the old machine, do you sell the old machine, do you give it to a family member? I'm just pretending all that doesn't exist. I'm gonna pretend it's a sunk cost and it's gone forever. You don't get any money back whatsoever for it. I fully understand that may not be true of everyone. A machine that's five years old, if you sell it on eBay, you're not gonna get the full value of it, but you might actually do okay with the value of it, depending on what kind of laptop you go with. Like, especially Apple laptops seem to hold their value very well. So I get it. I know you're probably already typing that comment, but I'm ignoring that on purpose because I really can't account universally for that. So with that in mind, here's what the actual model looks like that I came up with. This is based on a five-year upgrade path. So for the first five years here, you're gonna have the exact same cost of ownership as the machine originally cost. In Framework's case, $872, a thousand for the Dell, so on and so forth down the line. Now in year five, when we first see our first upgrade, the Framework laptop with just getting a new motherboard and a new RAM kit, because if you're going to a Ryzen machine like 
I am, then you will have to upgrade your RAM to a new kit. For that matter, if you're waiting five years, even if you're sticking with Intel by then, I would imagine you're going to need a new RAM kit. I'm pricing that out based on what Amazon pricing was today, which was about $105, I believe, for the RAM kit. So the total cost after you get the new main board plus the new RAM kit is going to bring you up on the framework side to about $1,426. And this is where owning a framework machine may pay off in the long run for some people because if you're replacing the Dell XPS with another thousand dollar laptop you're going to be up there at about two thousand dollars ditto for the ZenBook you're going to be up here around sixteen hundred dollars if you're getting the Prestige 14 you're going to now be up at 1250 and if you're getting the Acer Swift 3 you're going to be just over a thousand dollars and then if we extrapolate one more upgrade path in year 10 same sort of thing I'm accounting for another RAM upgrade, which is going to cost around $125 is what I guesstimated. Who knows what that will actually be in reality. But the main board is still going to be priced at uh, what currently the low end main boards have always been priced at by framework. Though, again, inflation will probably cause these numbers to be a little bit larger by then. We're ignoring that because we can't predict that. But we'll be around $2,000 after 10 years of owning a framework laptop, whereas the XPS will be up towards $3,000. The ZenBook will be a little north of $2,000. The Prestige 14, a little under $2,000. And the Acer Swift 3, if that's the path that you keep going with, that's only going to be around $1,600. Now, all this is to say that the startup cost of a framework laptop is is likely to be higher than the startup cost of a similarly spec machine unless you're getting these sort of real top end build quality machines like the Dell XPS line that are just like not only top end specs or potentially top end specs but also you're getting an awesome screen awesome speaker setup which is undeniably better than what framework is offering. However, you are also paying for that. So framework may be on the more expensive side of laptop ownership when it comes to just looking at the specs, especially at your first uh, cycle of purchases. But if you go the route of upgrading it over time, it could actually start to save you some money, especially if you're someone that likes to upgrade frequently. Owning a framework laptop might actually result in it being significantly cheaper than similarly specced machines. Plus, if you're upgrading frequently, and that's your sort of MO, not only are you saving the money, but you're staying on the pretty close to bleeding edge of a CPU technology. So uh, framework does have some upside to it, the longer you own the actual machine. But basically it all comes down to what does your upgrade cycle look like individually? And that's something that individually consumers have to be able to answer for themselves because that's not something that anyone can create a universal formula for. So what I'm curious from all of you in those comments down below, what does your laptop upgrade cycle look like? Uh, is it something that's every other year, every third year, every fourth year? Are you someone that's more likely to run a machine until it dies and then upgrade? What does that all look like for you? Let us know in those comments down below. Otherwise, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware. I'll see you all in the next video.